Um, so you guys, welcome to another episode of the masterclass that we have. Um, and today we have our coach, David Caldwell, uh, who is in Oregon, and he's an amazing person. Not only is he a coach for Tom Ferry, uh, so that, you know, as a profession, he does that, but he also is a full-time agent and has a team. And, uh, and obviously he's, you know, known for specific things like, you know, PPC and, and, and you know, uh, YouTube, but just like he has helped me come out of my farming shell and identity, um, he's also phenomenal, several things. And so today we're going to be talking about how to um, go after expired listings and how to make those connections and opportunities that are available there. So uh, David, without further ado, go ahead and take over and tell us uh, all the secrets that you know. Well, like Nazar said, you guys, like for those who don't know me, I'm a coach, but I consider myself a real estate agent first. I think why people like me as a coach is because I'm doing the things you guys are doing. And I'm about like, as a coach, about things at scale, right? Like I don't want to talk about a one-off success. I want to talk about something every single person can take into their business and have success. The reason we're doing expired today, if you went two weeks back to the call that we had, and we were talking about preparing for next year and where there are opportunities where we just started having this discussion about the opportunity inside expired listings. And if you've been a real estate agent for, you know, the last five years, you know, the last two years, there haven't been a ton of expired listing opportunities, although they've existed, but expired listings are always a great opportunity to create new conversations with new would-be sellers who could turn into clients, right? So, I always think it's really important to have a map, right? And know what the terrain looks like. So let's just talk about where listings are year to date in this country. So according to Redfin, during the month of September in the United States, there were 1,504,000 active listings. 501,000 new listings in September. There were only 412,000 sales, you guys. Right. Like we've been talking a lot about having an inventory shortage and in certain price points in certain areas, that certainly exists. But if you watch inventory, you're starting to see this gap between active inventory and closed sales. 1.5 million listings on the market during September, and they're estimating we're going to have around four and a half million sales in the United States this year. That means some people on the market today will not sell this year. Some people today will take their home off the market prematurely because they're not going to get the best advice they could get from their agent, right? How Have we all seen listings come off the market prematurely? Someone's on the market like three, four weeks and they take their home off the market. Now, I think the typical realtor, we'd want to be like, well, that's a stubborn seller. Maybe he got really bad advice from their agent. And that's what I want to talk about today is conversations that create opportunities to get interviewed to sell someone's house. Because I think Nazar said it last week, maybe you could help me with it, Nazar, so I don't have a coughing fit. Out of the listings that sell, X amount sell in the next, or relist in the next 60 days. What was that stat you gave? I don't know if it's an exact number, but it's like 30% will relist immediately with the same agent. And you'll, you'll see that, right, come up. Uh, they just use it as a strategy to relist. Now, you know, 10, 10, 15 years ago before Zillow was around, that was an effective strategy because it would look like a brand new listing with effects with the sites like Zillow and Realtor.com and so forth. They have cumulative days on market. And in fact, our MLSs have cumulative days on market. So it's not like you're fooling anybody necessarily to do that strategy. So it's not that effective, but people still do it. A third of those individuals are going to change their mind, not relist for a while, right? Um, we don't know the number of, or how long they're going to be, but they're, they've changed their, they've made, had their plans changed. And then a third are going to relist with another agent because they feel like the agent was the culprit that caused their home not to sell. The last listing that I took that was an effectively a, a canceled listing was for that exact reason, where they felt like the agent that they hired was not effective, didn't know what they're doing, and therefore they needed someone that can do a better job of, of bringing their home to market. You guys, in my marketplace in Portland this year, last month we had 1,800 pending sales. There's 4,500 homes on the market right now. 
it's statistically improbable that they will all sell. And if you went and looked at your market and you knew those numbers, some of you might, some of you might not. To me, these are important things to know because this is how we help our clients get price reductions. This is how we help an expired listing know where they're at in the market. But also as agents, for me, I look at that and go, well, this is an opportunity for me, right? These are people who've already raised their hand, agreed to hire an agent that have some motivation to move. And here's like a mindset thing, you guys, or even this is a script I use. People's plans often don't change. They just get delayed. Right? That's something we need to think about with these expired listings. People's plans often don't change. They just get delayed. I love that. Um, the statistic is that every people or people make a move every 10 years. And so if that's the average, then if that person at one point raised their hand, they might have changed their mind or have delayed their move. But yeah. it's going to happen in the next one, two years. And so getting them as a potential client, putting them as a, and having them become a sphere and connect with them and drip on them and love on them, you're going to get that listing because everyone else is going to give up after the first week or so. Yep. And that's a great point. Something I wanted to talk about, and we'll just skip to it, is that this is a long-term strategy. In any long-term strategy, you guys, there's some immediate gratification. Sending out postcards, farming, that is a long-term strategy. And then people get surprised when they send out postcards and they get a listing. But every long-term strategy includes some short-term gratification. But if you look at expires as just a short-term thing, you're not, you might win a little bit, but it's going to be hard to really win in the long term. Because to Nazar's point, I expire and maybe my plans don't change. They just get delayed 12 to 24 months. Well, we know that most real estate salespeople we just give up too early. Right? Oh, I called this person twice and they didn't return my call. Here's a reminder to you guys. It's not the consumer, that your customer, your client's job to call you back. It's your job to remind them you're available. And that is a significant challenge with real estate in expired listings specifically. Because we call people, we send them a letter, we send them a packet about selling with us. We drop off a little dahlia on the door, tell them we're sorry your house didn't sell, sell call me. And they don't. But it's our job to build a relationship with them over time, remind them we're available. So when they're ready to have that conversation, they will. You know, I've never liked the script, uh, and maybe some people do. So don't be mad at me if you like this one. When are you going to hire the right agent for the job? Have you guys heard that expired listing script? Mike Berry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys, I'm like a big empathy guy. Like if I get someone on the phone, Hey, Nazar, I, I know your house didn't sell. And I know most people's plans don't change. They just get delayed. And I'm wondering if we could just talk a couple minutes about your experience in the market. And maybe I can lend some insight. That's like the biggest way I'm creating conversations with expired listings right now, you guys. And you know what? Here's a really challenging thing for most real estate agents is to actually understand how to dictate the market. You ask these people that have tried to sell their home what their perception of the market is, what their agent told them. Well, their, their agent just told them it's hard. When I just listed for sale, 4.8 months of inventory in their price point. 50 homes on the market. There's about seven going pending a week. And there's new listings getting added. So how do we compete in a market like that? And I could just, I mean, literally, I proposed that question to her. And we talked about it. But she didn't know. She's fixated on a house that's not even a comp that sold six months ago and why she can't get that price. You know, markets are markets, you guys. Our job is to dictate them and help people understand how to learn and navigate through them. And where are their opportunities? The hardest thing is getting someone on the phone, right? like the getting them to answer. That's the hardest part. The next piece I actually think is pretty simple, right? If I lead with, can I interview to list your house tomorrow? Can I come over tonight at five? Can I do those things? That can actually present, I think, a really big challenge in today's market. Some people are going to let you, a driver is going to let you, but most people aren't drivers, they're SCs. 
hey, Nazar, what would I have to do over the next six months just to earn the opportunity to interview with you when you do decide to relist your home? That's a question I love. What could I do to earn the opportunity to interview to be your agent? Does anyone hate that script? Would anyone hate hearing that on the other side of the phone? What could I do to earn the opportunity? Because I think the words we use really matter in these type of conversations. I've never charged anyone a commission, but I've earned it before. David, what do you charge? Will I earn? It's different. You guys like catching this, right? Who maybe is just really afraid to call an expired listing on here? I wouldn't even know where to start. A couple of us. You know the cool thing about calling expired listings are, you guys? If you really bomb, they forget about you like four minutes later. They don't even know your name. I'll tell you a funny story about it. So I had a coach named Carrie Craig when I started selling. I mean, not start selling, but a long time ago. Like my first Tom Ferry coach. Because I still have a Tom Ferry coach more than 10 years ago. And she's like, how'd your expired calls go? And I was like, oh, they're terrible. This guy did this, this guy did this, this guy. It was during the Great Recession, right? I remember there was this house, little house in Lake Oswego. I remember the guy just, man, he lit me up. Told me to F myself, yada, 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 hung up the phone. And she's like, I want you to call all those people back. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, call them back. What's really funny, one of these guys I called back, got an appointment with him, went to his house, listed his house for sale. After we signed contracts, I was like, do you know on Tuesday you told me to F myself? And he goes, I told everyone to F themselves on Tuesday. <laughs> he didn't even remember that I had called. And that was an aha moment for me. One, it's okay to mess up on these calls every once in a while because people forget. It's how you get better. Two, sometimes you get people on bad days, right? If you're the 23rd person that calls that expired listing that day, it's a rough one. But here's what I can promise two weeks, three weeks, five weeks down the road, those 26 people aren't calling anymore. You might be the only one. Hey, if you're afraid to call or you're nervous, make it a discovery call. Make it a market update call. Make it a, hey, I had this observation about your house when it was on the market. And I think if you would have done this, you could have had a different result. And I'm just wondering if you were thinking about relisting your home for sale, is there anything I could do to earn the opportunity to interview to be your listing agent? I think it's important for, to, to realize that it comes from the initial mindset that you could do a better job than the previous agent did. 100%. And you know we, we have to realize that not all agents are the same. They don't advertise the same. For for the last, you know, what, three, four, five years, you put a home on the market and it sells and you're done, right? You really didn't do anything spectacular to really market that property. The only marketing that most agents did with those listings were self-gratifying. Hey, look, what amazing job I did. I, I, I literally had my assistant put the home on the MLS and it sold. Yeah. Like, there, what, what's the skill set there? There wasn't any. And so now those agents that don't have that skill set need to regain it. And so like, if you think about, you know, what you can do to really market the property and you can see, right. You see the MLS, you see the things that they did or what they didn't do, the description that was written or was not written, the pictures that were awful or were they were not the price point that was either off or not. Like there's so many variables and why a home didn't sell. And it's not just price. Right? In fact, price could be one of the least things or one of the less important things that didn't take place. And so I think when you come from with that mindset of approaching them and saying, Hey, I know why you didn't home, your home didn't sell and price wasn't the main reason. I'd love to be able to talk to you more about that. And I'd be like, wait, what? You know, so, and then obviously those conversations are always better had in person than they are on the phone. But yeah, you guys are always going to close better in person. Always. If you guys like, let's, let's talk about a common objection that have been expired. Well, we tried that. We did that. We were on the market for this long. 
My favorite thing to say in response to that is there's new buyers entering the market every day. And they can't see you if you're not listed for sale. But there's new buyers coming into the market every single day. You guys, that's a trump card. I use it all the time. Oh, we tried it. We're, we're this, we're this, we're this. Selling a house is hard. Yeah, I get it. Right? But there's new buyers coming to the market every single day. And then what's the story in your market where that's an advantage for them? Hey, right now in Portland, because we have 4.8 months of inventory in the primary market that I work, it's time or price. The good news is there's new buyers entering the market every day. The bad news is the longer we're on the market, the more vulnerable we are to negotiate our price over time. Hey, who feels comfortable talking to their clients about the transfer of equity? We have a, my, on my team, our little, our little slogan is live better, right? Because that's why you move. You move so you can have a better quality of life. And people get trapped and stuck and they don't want to do a $10,000 price reduction. But by not doing that $10,000 price reduction, it eliminates their ability to transfer their equity from one asset to the other. And generally, when they make that transfer, their quality of life increases. David, have you ever tried to sell your house and, and were unsuccessful yourself? Yeah. And I mean, if you really think about it, maybe you guys have not put yourself in that position before. But when you're trying to sell an asset, whatever it is, and you have these massive plans, and obviously moving is a huge thing. It takes a lot of energy to be able to make that transition because if the pain of moving is more than the pain of staying, you won't move. So the pain of staying has to be more than the pain of making the, the, the transition. And so when you finally pull the trigger and say, all right, fine, we're going to do this, and it doesn't work, can you imagine how frustrated it becomes? right? How difficult it becomes. And so in that situation, when you're calling them, they're distraught. Their plans have fallen apart because they had this an idea of what their next move is going to be. And it, and it didn't work. You guys, this is like the therapist hat we wear, right? Like what, what Nazar just said, a lot of people end up in that situation because they don't want to give up $10,000 or $20,000. Most people coming in doing price reductions, they're not reducing the price by 10%. They're reducing it by five. I, I just closed an expired listing. I didn't even change the price, right? A lot of times you're not changing things so much, but we have to help our clients let go so they can move on, right? Because they're distraught because they're holding on so, you know, I always think it's this transfer of equity conversation. You know, to, to get where you want to go, you have to release this asset. What if you got $10,000 less? Hey, this is a question I ask sometimes you guys and don't ask it uh, if you're not really comfortable with somebody. If I cut you a check right now for $10,000, would it change your life? No, almost no one says yes, by the way. I've only had a couple of people say it, say yes. But most people say no. It wouldn't, but if you sold this property, would it change your life? And what I'm trying to point out here is you're letting X amount of dollars stand in the way from moving on. Because isn't this a little bit similar to even the buyers we're working with right now? Their payment's just a couple hundred more dollars than they want. And they're focused on that instead of the wealth they're going to build over time owning real estate. Sometimes we let these little figures by percentage stand in the way from us accomplishing our goal. And we just need someone that's the trusted advisor to help point that out or propose the question to help them think. I wouldn't have my commercial building if I wouldn't have had a conversation like that with a real estate agent I hired to sell a property I could have hired myself but I knew at some point I might be too emotional on selling this like beach house I dreamed of buying, right? Finally bought it. And then to buy the commercial building, I had to sell it. There'll be another beach house, right? But it was hard. I hired a real estate agent to actually coach me through it. Because I knew at some point I was going to be like, no, whatever. 
right? We David, all have to go ahead. There's a, <clears throat> just recently happened, there's a homeowner that had their property for sale uh, for 3.5 million, 119 days later, didn't sell, they got frustrated and they took it off the market and they relisted with the same idiot agent and they listed it for 1.8, no, 1.9 million. They went from 3.5 to 1.9 and it sold in seven days for 1.7 all cash. Wow. Guess who, who, guess who doubled into the transaction? That agent. Yeah. Literally within seven days, the home was back on the market with a new investor for 2.8 million. This guy did nothing. Didn't literally lift a finger. The house is identical. They took new pictures of the same exact home and they listed for a million dollars more than what he just bought it for a day before. And like, it just puts a really bad taste in my mouth when, when it comes to agents doing that. But you guys, like that seller was desperate, yep. right? They could have easily sold it for 2.8 if they had just listed it for that. But because they listed it for way less because they just were done, right? No one was seeing the property. No one was interested at 3.5. And so just let it go. And so like the, these homeowners need our help. They need our help so that unethical just annoying agents don't come in and 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 just you know put a bad name to, yeah. to reputation. So I mean, like when I hear that story, it makes me think of how critical it is for all of us to have a really comprehensive understanding of what's going on in the marketplace. And like, if I could have any brand as a coach, it wouldn't be a marketing guy. Like I'm trying to be the market update guy, right? Like people, we really need to understand what's happening and why. Right. In Portland this year, 26% of the homes that have listed for sale have not yet sold. Our average sales price has declined almost 3% year over year. And that's been accelerating. Dave, since we don't have a lot of time left, would you mind doing a role play? Yeah, let's do one. Okay. I could be the, the home seller. And remember, okay. when you're saying expired, don't look at just, when you're looking on MLS, don't look at just expired. Just look at expired yeah. and cancels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cancels are the same thing. In fact, cancels are more intentional because they've taken the the necessary steps to cancel that contract with that that uh, brokerage that they had. So, all right, David, hey. Let, let's set some uh, boundaries. My home's been marked for four months, and um, you know, I have to take the home off the market. Okay. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Nazar. Hey, this is David Caldwell with Hillshire Realty Group. The reason I'm calling is I saw that you had taken your home off the market after it had been on for a few months. And I'm calling because I really believe it's saleable. And I know people's plans don't often change. They just get delayed. And if you just had a couple of minutes, I want to see if we could talk about what your plans are and a little bit about the market. Maybe I could offer you a little bit different perspective. David, it's nine o'clock in the morning. I've already had 15 people call me. Like I'm I know. just, you know what? It's it. it What's really challenging when your home comes off is a lot of people call and they just want to try to get a listing appointment. And yeah. I get, I just want to see if maybe I ha if you had five minutes that I could help you. Like maybe I could try to like lend some of what I know about selling real estate in this marketplace today. Could maybe buyer for my home? I'm sorry. Could a buyer for my home. Oh, I'm not sure if I have a buyer yet because I haven't been through it yet. But I, we could. We do a lot of buyer marketing. We do lots of things to to you know get buyers in the market. But I'm not sure if I have a buyer right now. I'm not calling saying I have a buyer. I wanted to see if, you know, just maybe a couple minutes to hear about your experience and what's been going on in the market and your perception of the market. Well, I mean, like we had two people come by the house. Like buyers are obviously not buying. Rates are super high. So we're just going to take it off the market for a little bit and then, you know, maybe revisit after the after the year. Yeah. I mean, we're in the most challenging market we've had in 10 years in Portland, for sure. And unfortunately, the trajectory of the market actually seems like it's getting worse not better. Um, tell me about the two showings you had, though. What was the feedback on the two showings? Um, I, I don't know. We, we never got the feedback from from the agents. Hmm. Yeah. Do you know if they called them or emailed them or just the agent just was kind of aloof? Uh, again, I, I asked my agent, but he, he said that he wasn't able to get a hold of them. Yeah. Look, I mean, one of the things about being in the market like we're in right now in the czar where the average sales price is declining and inventory is steadily increasing is you need a really proactive agent. I don't know if your agent was proactive or not, or if it was the other agents that were the problem. Um, one thing I do know is there's new buyers coming into the market every single day. And there's things that we've been able to do this year to actually help people in your situation. I don't call every expired listing. I only call ones that I believe that I could sell. 
So, you know, what I was actually hoping here, here's actually my goal. My goal is just to have a conversation with you to see if I could earn the opportunity to at some point come over to your house and look at it and give my opinion on the market. And I don't know if it'd be good to have that conversation now, or if maybe we should have it like in a week or two, like let things cool down a little bit. But, you know, I've sold, this is where I'd go through like comparable sales. I've sold X, I've sold X, I've sold X, I've sold X. And I just believe I can get you a similar result. Yeah, maybe you can reach back out to me in uh, sometime in January. Sometime in January. Can I get your phone number and email address? You just you your just email don't... address. Your email address. I don't want to be bothered. You don't want to be bothered. No. Yeah, just call me then. This is our one more thing. If I did, you asked if I had a buyer. If I did have a buyer today, would things be different? Would you let me come over? Yeah. Yeah, we're we're. we're... Um, you know, looking, making a move. We're going out of state, and so you know, we've had to put everything on hold and, until the, that uh, that we get the home sold. So, so have you guys already identified another property? Uh, we're moving to Idaho. Um, we we had we were in, under contract on another property, and since we couldn't get this home sold, we we had to cancel our, our our contract. So, what's the market like in Idaho right now? Um, there, there's opportunity. I mean, you know, the home that we wanted, it, it, it we're able to get it very quickly. But is there, uh, still, is there still appreciation going on? My understanding is Idaho is still appreciating. Uh, it depends on the pockets. Yeah, we're, we're just looking at downsize there. So, um, yeah, just I mean, it is what it is. We'll, we'll, we'll wait till January and then we'll go from there. Can I just share one big concern I have with you, Nazar? What? Anyone who's thinking about waiting right now in a declining market, they're just going to cost themselves more money later. Yeah, but I mean, I've heard that rates are going to finally come back down next year. So if they do, then the value should ideally go up at that point. So and are you hearing that from other real estate professionals? Or are you hearing that from people outside the real estate industry? Because real estate and real estate professionals have been saying that for a year and it hasn't happened yet. Um, I've been hearing from everybody. So Nazar, what if they don't decline? Um, what if they don't decline? Then yeah. hopefully the prices, the homes that I'm buying are going to also decline. Sure. And that's why I was asking about the Idaho market. What I always think is really interesting is we have to talk about this like transfer of equity, right? And which asset is moving at a different pace, right? Is your asset here in Portland better than the asset you'd be buying in Idaho? Would your quality of life be better? Would it be different? And here, look, I know you don't want to be bothered. I know I'm like the 15th, 18th, 20th guy who's called today. But do you think we could find maybe like 30 minutes really to like break this down? Because I think this is worthy of helping protect the equity that you have. Um, again, if you want to come this afternoon, like I'll, I'll give you 30 minutes. Sure, perfect. What time? Uh, I get home by five. So You'll be home by five? Okay, 5.30 sound good? Yeah. Well, I'll be there at 5.30. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's that's how that's how I... That's how I keep going, right? Ask for the sale a couple of times, ask for the sale. He didn't say no, but he kept talking to me. As long as Nazar doesn't hang up and keeps engaging me, then I could try different little questions, different little sequences. It's not about just the, um, you know, because they're going to hang up on you, right? If, if they're if they're frustrated, they're going to hang up on you. If you were the 15th call, you might not even, you know, as soon as they find out that you're an agent, they would have hung up on you. It's how you show up at that moment of time, you know, what you choose to do in that ask, you know, in, in that moment. Like I would say, you know, try to talk to them a couple of different times, but if you can't, then get your butt in the car, drive to their dang house. Because if you get face to face, then that's going to be half the battle. And once you get face to face and and then, you know, you had some really good objection handlers and just say, hey, listen, what, what, what if we could sell your house? Would you still move to Idaho? Would you still wait till January if I can get you under contract in, in the next two weeks? And you pose, you pose a, quick, a good, uh, great question. You said, you know, what if your value went down more? What happened then? And, and so I, I think there's, you know, like they need our help. They really do. It, don't don't come from a place of you want to go get a listing. Come from a place of hey, I'm genuinely here because I can feel the frustration in your voice that 
you wanted to make a move and you you had to hold to your 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 plans. And if I could help you get back on there and and you know make the move, I'd love to most certainly show you how I'm going to do that because I'm confident that I can. And you guys look like most people. The hardest thing is to get them on the phone. But most people in this world, they're SCs. They want to talk, actually, right? Drivers, we don't. But you get a like. I got a driver expired on a on a call weeks and weeks ago, where they interviewed a whole bunch of people, and I was like, "Great, your time's really valuable. Do you think if I can like maybe propose a solution on this call, we could sign a listing contract by the end of it?" And you know what's crazy? She said yes, and I just closed that transaction. Listing contract signed before I ever went to the house. You know, like that's challenging. But like most people, when you get them on the phone, you can keep them on and they can say no and no and no. And you can just kind of ask, like, why not? Hey, what would be the harm in meeting with me for 30 minutes? We've already been on the phone for X amount of time. You guys, you get better when you do, when you put in the reps and you do the work. I started doing expired listings very passively, sending people letters, right? Sending people notes, dropping stuff off on their doorsteps. We used to put a puzzle on the door. And one of the little puzzle pieces was a Hillshire logo. And we put in a note card, you need all the right pieces to sell a house. Like we were the piece. It was really cute. Problem was it wasn't very effective, right? But as soon as we started calling people, oh, you're the puzzle guy. If I'm the puzzle guy, a little bit easier to get in the door. But now I just know I can just skip to the calls, right? Don't be afraid to help someone solve their problem. There are jerks in the world, right? When people used to tell me to F off or I was an a-hole or whatever, I used to be like, oh, I didn't know what to say. Now I'm now I say, now my objection handle to that is you don't even know me. I'm actually quite a nice guy. Right. And then you know you people usually say after that, I'm sorry. What I would say is if I'm an a-hole, but I can get your home sold, would you still yeah. want to hire the a-hole? Hey, if I get a sorry, I can get an appointment. So I don't, right? I don't really like me. I just need you to trust me that I can get your your damn house sold. You like guys, I sorry, go ahead. You're fine. Well, let's close this out. Well, I think two weeks ago I said sell four more houses in a year, you could change your life. I mean, seriously, you guys, like there are four expired listings you guys could take. There's 30 if someone has a really big goal, right? But we live in this beautiful like world of real estate. Where we could just sell a couple more houses and legitimately change our family tree. One of my clients, just represented an $8.2 million buyer from circle dialing, telling people about an open house. Stranger things have happened. Oh. That woman's life has changed. If she's smart with the money. <laughs> um, David, thank you so much for preparing to, to, to talk about and motivating all of us to be able to get on the phone and uh oh shoot yeah how do I do that that's right guys hey apple's great but when it's all combined it just sometimes messes things up uh thank you so much for being on the call thank you for allowing us to be able to connect and really think about how we can reach out to those individuals not be scared to make that phone call not be afraid to go and knock on their door to deliver value go, don't go there and just be like hey like go there with stats, go there with information. And if you do that, you're going to be the knowledgeable agent that's going to help them navigate this really challenging time in selling properties. Because if someone says homes don't sell or homes are not selling, and you're like, well, actually, right? These many so homes sold this last week. Wouldn't it be awesome if you were one of them? You guys, it, it, you guys in Portland, we're going to have one of the fewest number of sales we've ever had. And I'm like, yeah, but 22,000 people are going to buy houses this year. That's a whole city. It's a whole city. It's a historically low. Yes, it is a whole city of people picking up and moving. Houses are selling. So you guys get out there, make it happen. And we also invite you, if you guys know anybody that wants that, that sees the benefit of, of these calls, it's every Thursday, right? Consistently every Thursday, Pacific time is 1030, East time is 130. 
show up, invite people. It's There's no cost to it. And it helps all of us to just become better agents. And that's the whole objective of this masterclass. So thanks again, David. Yes. Have a great weekend. See you next week. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you.